Hey, it's great to have you back. By now, we've learned a lot about presenting data. We covered how to create presentations with data visualizations and how to deliver those presentations effectively. That means it's time to tackle the last part of your presentation, a Q&A, also known as a question and answer period. A Q&A is an opportunity for stakeholders and audience members to ask you any questions they might have about your findings. They can be challenging because you don't always know what people are going to ask. So in these videos, you'll learn some best practices to help you master it. Coming up, we'll cover how to think about possible questions and objections before a Q&A. We'll also become better listeners. And finally, we'll learn how to keep our whole audience involved and included. Let's get started. So let's talk about how you can be sure you're prepared for a Q&A. For starters, knowing the questions ahead of time can make a big difference. You don't have to be a mind reader, but there's a few things you can do to prepare that'll help. For this example, we'll go back to the presentation we created about health and happiness around the world. We put together these slides, cleaned them up a bit, and now we're getting ready for the actual presentation. Let's go over some ways we can anticipate possible questions before our Q&A to give us more time to think about the answers. Understanding your stakeholders' expectations will help you predict the questions they might ask. As we previously discussed, it's important to set stakeholder expectations early in the project. Keep their expectations in mind while you're planning presentations and Q&A sessions. Make sure you have a clear understanding of the objective and what the stakeholders wanted when they asked you to take on this project. For this project, our stakeholders were interested in what factors contributed to a happier life around the world. Our objective was to identify if there were geographic, demographic, and or economic factors that contributed to a happier life. Knowing that, we can start thinking about the potential questions about that objective they might have. At the end of the day, if you misunderstood your stakeholders' expectations or the project objectives, you won't be able to correctly anticipate their questions. So think about these things early and often when planning for a Q&A. Once you feel confident that you fully understand your stakeholders' expectations and the project goals, you can start identifying possible questions. A great way to identify audience questions is to do a test run of your presentation. I like to call this the colleague test. Show your presentation or your data viz to a colleague who has no previous knowledge of your work and see what questions they ask you. They might have the same questions your real audience does. We talked about feedback as a gift, so don't be afraid to seek it out and ask colleagues for their opinions. Let's say we ran through our presentation with a colleague we showed them our data visualizations, then asked them what questions they had. They tell us they weren't sure how we were measuring health and happiness with our data in this slide. That's a great question, and we can absolutely work that information into our presentation. Sometimes, the questions asked during our colleague tests help us revise our presentation. Other times, they help us anticipate questions that might come up during the presentation even if we didn't originally want to build that information into the presentation itself. So it helps to be prepared to go into detail about your process, but only if someone asks. Either way, their feedback can help take your presentation to the next level. Next, it's helpful to start with zero assumptions. Don't assume that your audience is already familiar with jargon, acronyms, past events, or other necessary background information. Try to explain these things in the presentation and be ready to explain them further if asked. When we showed our presentation to our colleague, we accidentally assumed that they already knew how health and happiness were measured and left that out of our original presentation. Now, let's look at our second data viz. This graph is showing the relationship between health, wealth, and happiness, but includes GDP to measure the economy. We don't want to assume that our audience knows what that means. So during the presentation, we'll want to include a definition of GDP. In our speaker notes, we've added gross domestic product, total monetary or market value of all the finished goods and services produced within a country's borders 
in a specific period of time. We'll fully explain what GDP means as soon as this graphic comes up. That way, no one in our audience is confused by that acronym. It helps to work with your team to anticipate questions and draft responses. Together, you'll be able to include their perspectives and coordinate answers so that everyone on your team is prepared and ready to share their unique insights with stakeholders. The team working on the World Happiness Project with you probably have a lot of great insights about the data, like how it was gathered or what it might be missing. Touch base with them so you don't miss out on their perspective. Finally, be prepared to consider and describe to your stakeholders any limitations in your data. You can do this by critically analyzing the patterns you discovered in your data for integrity. For example, could the correlations found be explained as coincidence? On top of that, use your understanding of the strengths and weaknesses of the tools you used in your analysis to pinpoint any limitations they may have introduced. While you probably don't have the power to predict the future, you can come pretty close to predicting stakeholder and audience questions by doing a few key things. Remember to focus on stakeholder expectations and project goals. Identify possible questions with your teams, review your presentation with zero assumptions, and consider the limitations of your data. Sometimes, though, your audience might raise objections to the data before and after your presentation. Coming up, we'll talk about the kind of objections they might have and how you can respond. Stakeholders might raise objections during or after your presentation. Usually these objections are about the data, your analysis, or your findings. We'll start by discussing what questions these objections are asking and then talk about how to respond. Objections about the data could mean a few different things. Sometimes stakeholders might be asking where you got the data and what systems it came from. Or they might want to know what transformations happened to it before you worked with it. Or how fresh and accurate your data is. You can include all this information in the beginning of your presentation to set up the data context. You can add a more detailed breakdown in your appendix in case there are more questions. When we are talking about cleaning data, you learn keeping a detailed log of data transformations is useful. That log can help you answer the questions we're talking about here. And if you keep it in your presentation's appendix, it'll be easy to reference if any of your stakeholders want more detail during a Q&A. Now, your audience might also have questions or objections about your analysis. They might want to know if your analysis is reproducible. So it helps to keep a change log documenting the steps you took. This way, someone else could follow along and reproduce your process. You can even create a slide in the appendix section of your presentation explaining these steps if you think it'll be necessary. And it can be useful to keep a clean version of your script if you're working with a programming language like SQL or R, which we'll learn all about later. Also, be prepared to answer questions like, who did you get feedback from during this process? This is especially important when your analysis reveals insights that are the opposite of your audience's gut feelings about the data. Making sure to include lots of perspectives throughout your analysis process will help you back up your findings during your presentation. Finally, you might be faced with objections to the findings themselves. A lot of the time, these will be questions like, do these findings exist in previous time periods? Or, did you control for the differences in your data? Your audience wants to be sure that your final results accounted for any possible inconsistencies and that they're accurate and useful. Now that you know some of the possible kinds of objections your audience might raise, Let's talk about how you can think about responding. First, it can be useful to communicate any assumptions about the data, your analysis, or your findings that might help answer their questions. For example, did your team clean and format your data before analysis? Telling your audience that can clear up any doubts they might have. Second, explain why your analysis might be different than expected. Walk your audience through the variables that change the outcomes to help them understand how you got there. And third, some objections have merit, especially if they bring up something you hadn't thought of before. If that's true, you can acknowledge that those objections are valid and take steps to investigate further.
Following up with more details afterwards is great too. And now you know some of the basic objections you might run into. Understanding that your audience might have questions about your data, your analysis, or your findings can help you prepare responses ahead of time. And walking your audience through any assumptions about the data or unexpected results are great approaches to responding. Earlier, we talked about some ways that you can respond to objections during or after your presentations. In this video, I want to share some more Q&A best practices. Let's go back to our world happiness presentation example. Imagine we've finished preparing for a Q&A, and it's time to actually answer some of our audience's questions. Let's go over some ways that we can be sure that we're answering questions effectively. We'll start with a really simple one. Listen to the whole question. I know this sounds like a given, but it can be really tempting to start thinking about your answer before the person you're talking to has even finished asking their question. On slide 11 of our presentation, we outline our conclusions. After explaining these conclusions, one of our stakeholders asks, how was happiness measured for this project? It's important to listen to the whole question and wait to respond until they're done talking. Take a moment to repeat the question. Repeating the question is helpful for a few different reasons. For one, it helps you make sure that you're understanding the question. Second, it gives the person asking it a chance to correct you if you're not. Anyone who couldn't hear the question will still know what's being asked. Plus, it gives you a moment to get your thoughts together. After listening to the question and repeating it to make sure you understand, you can explain that participants in different countries were given a survey that asked them to rate their happiness. And just like that, your audience has a better understanding of the project because you took the time to listen carefully. Okay, so now that they know about the survey, they're interested in knowing more. At this point, we can go into more detail about that data. We have a slide built in here called the appendix. This is a great place to keep extra information that might not be necessary for our presentation, but could be useful for answering questions afterwards. This is also a great place for us to have more detailed information about the survey data so we can reference it more easily. As always, make sure you understand the context questions are being asked in. Think about who is your audience and what kinds of concerns or backgrounds they might have. Remember the project goals and your stakeholders' interests in them. And try to keep your answers relevant to that specific context just like you made sure your presentation itself was relevant to your stakeholders. We have this slide with data about life expectancy as a metric for health. If you're presenting to a group of stakeholders who are in the healthcare industry, they're probably going to be more interested in the medical data and the relationship between overall health and happiness. Knowing this, you can tailor your answers to focus on their interests so that the presentation is relevant and useful to them. When answering, try to involve the whole audience. You aren't just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the person that's asked the question. You're presenting to a group of people who might also have the same question or need to know what that answer is. It's important to not accidentally exclude other audience members. You can also include other voices. If there's someone in your audience or team that might have insight, ask them for their thoughts. Keep your responses short and to the point. Start with a headline response that gives your stakeholders the basic answer. Then, if they have more questions, you can go into more detail. This can be difficult as a data analyst. You have all the background information and want to share your hard work, but you don't want to lose your audience with a long and potentially confusing answer. Stay focused on the question itself. This is why listening to the whole question is so important. It keeps the focus on that specific question. Answer the question as directly as possible using the fewest words you can. From there, you can expand on your answer or add color, context, and detail as needed. Like when one of our stakeholders asked how the data measuring happiness was gathered. We started by telling them that a survey was used to measure an individual's happiness. And only when they were interested in hearing more about the survey did we go into more detail. So to recap, 
When you're answering questions during a presentation Q&A, remember to listen to the whole question, repeat the question if necessary, understand the context, involve your whole audience, and keep your responses short. And remember, you don't have to answer every question on the spot. If it's a tough question that will require additional analysis or research, it's fine to let your audience know that you'll get back to them. Just remember to follow up in a timely manner. These tips will make it easier to answer questions and make you seem prepared and professional. Now that your presentation ready, it's time to wrap up. We covered a lot about how to consider questions before a Q&A, how to handle different kinds of objections, and some best practices you can use in your next presentation. Congratulations on finishing this video from the Google Data Analytics Certificate. Access the full experience, including job search help, and start to earn the official certificate by clicking the icon or the link in the description. Watch the next video in the course by clicking here. And subscribe to our channel for more from upcoming Google Career Certificates.